Welcome to Sonata Secrets with Henrik Tilham, unlocking the world of classical music. So, Liszt's ballad number two in B minor. Chopin wrote four ballads that are pillar works in the piano repertoire. But Liszt's contribution to the genre isn't perhaps as much played, but this is truly a major work of art. I first heard it at a summer piano festival in the south of France on an outside stage. Brilliant French pianist played this and I was just blown away by this piece. The emotional depth of it and just the sheer power. So I started learning it the next semester. As the title indicates, this is music with a narrative. It tells a tale. There are two ideas of what that tale is that inspired Liszt to write this. And I'm going to go with a version of the Greek myth of Hero and Leander. And the pianist Claudio Arau, he believes in this and he has it from his teacher Martin Kraus, who was a pupil of Liszt himself, that this is the case. And so this is my interpretation of how that story relates to the music. So, Hero is some kind of priestess living in a tower on an island. But it's more like she's a nun in a monastery. So she's not allowed to see any boys. And then of course, Leander is a boy who is in love with Hero and he lives on the mainland. But since they're not supposed to meet, they have a clever secret system. At night time, Hero lights a lantern in her room in the top of the tower of the island. And Leander swims across the strait, uh, guided by the lantern, so they can be with each other at night time. And then Leander swims back in morning. And in the music, it starts with this uh, ominous motion in the left hand. It's a pretty good representation of waves in the sea. And then uh, you have this melody, a solemn and serious melody, just smells of Greek tragedy. This is Leander swimming. This last bit is a hint of the passion that's about to come later on in the piece. This, uh... oh. And then you have these amazing chords that changes the scene. It's, it's so amazing when they just hit you and it's nothing you can do, just total surrendering to the tragedy of the tale. Uh, they come again higher up. And they end on a more positive note. And now what follows is uh, a complete contrast to the serious uh, tragic theme before. So this is like hero's theme or the love theme of when they are together. It's full of uh, longing and yearning chords. It's a lot of plus five chords that I call the yearning chord. Because they're all the time uh, moving forward and longing for the next resolution. Uh, so the theme comes again lower now. Comes to 
door closed. Final longing chord and the resolution. Now after this, both of these themes are repeated almost exactly the same, just with some small variations. And one difference, uh, it's one note lower. So digging slightly deeper in the register, making it even more ominous. So this is Leander swimming for the second night. chords and now we get the love theme again uh, this uh, lovely sweet theme In the story, Leander does this swimming for several nights. And for the third night, a storm is coming. So here we get an episode that uh, signals that something dramatic is incoming. So it's some kind of uh, uh, crazy march starting here. This is like uh, splashes of water hitting the rocks. to deep, uh, this deep ominous register again. Just some fragments of melody in the right hand. And coming down and cooling off. Now here we're going to feel how the wind increases and the storm is coming, and a lot of octaves in the hands, uh, and it's going to go on for a while, so just enjoy the roller coaster of this. This is a new like big wave starting in the left hand now. Fragments in the right hand. And here we have a return of the tragic theme with uh, uh, really big waves, uh, these cascades in the right hand. Fighting against the stormy sea, and this 
Last big wave. Uh, it really has to struggle. And what comes after this? I feel these chords uh, like Leander is uh, gasping for breath from being tossed around by the wave. So. kind of makes it. And here we have a few bars of a new theme that I like to call the narrator's theme because I feel like it's like a narrator comes in uh, commenting about what's happening in the story. Uh, it's a bit like a cliffhanger, like uh, does Leander make it through the storm in the water? Is he able to uh, meet his love once again? Um, Uh, median chords um, that makes us unsure of the harmonic grounding because they keep moving around with a lot of chromatic notes in the melody. That's what a median chord does. So chord so you can guess where it's going yes Leander made it so he said he can meet a hero again and they can be together this is the love theme that comes again in gorgeous D major now with the bass so it's more full in a way we get it one more time just for the sake of it in G major fragment of the same theme but in the super low register so getting back to the uh, yeah you can guess what is going back to oh yes it's swimming time again <laughs> so this is now the fourth night and Leander starts swimming. It's, it's pretty uh, still and cool when he starts. increasing uh, this night as well yeah and this goes on for a while now uh, this is the theme um, a tempest also means literally stormy so Storm here. 
storm. Uh, waves like buildings and a very effective way of piano writing here. You really like get all the sound that the piano's got, you know. fragments again that I said was gasping for breath before and now in the story spoiler alert uh, the winds and the storm they blow out the lantern that Hero has lit in the tower so with nothing to guide him Leander cannot make it and perishes in the sea typical tragic Greek drama and the moral is probably that you're not supposed to cheat the rules of being a nun and stuff. Anyway, my interpretation of the story in the music here is that this last big tsunami wave is the wave that kills Leander. Uh, so from here on, he's dead. But it's a, a lot of the piece is still left, so it's just it's the aftermath. But it's very important aftermath. Anyway, these fragments, if they are gasping for breath or not, you still need some time to come down from the extreme intensity of the storm. Uh, and I keep the pedal here with this wave. When I play the first fragment. And then you get this amazing loud silence here. When the deep sea has been silenced. So then you get it a second time. And in the piece, everything is repeated twice almost. So here we have the narrator's theme again. And I really feel it's, it's a new character that comes in. It's been cooling off for a while, and then suddenly you have this appassionato, passionate, uh, really like an appearance of a new character that weighs in. You have these amazing harmony changes. theme again for the fourth time of the piece but it's slightly different this time uh, Liz specifies that you're supposed to play it alternating with the hand with the chords like this it's a very special effect if you play it this way dolce placido means sweetly and placid and you can even hear it as uh, funeral bells for Leander as perished in the sea, if you want. Interpretation of the theme in this way would be something like this. Hero is still waiting in her tower for Leander. She doesn't know that he has perished in the sea. But we know because it has been narrated to us. So that's why we can hear these uh, distant funeral bells underneath the melody. So it's a complex double effect here. 
that makes it really powerful. So then after the first time, comes a, a second time, but with a new harmony and not just a sweet harmony this time. Now it's signaling something is in the works. Keep the pianissimo though. favorite places in the piece. Uh, we still have some aftermath to do. It's five pages left of the piece. The key is now B major, so a flip from B minor as when we began. And here a new theme is introduced. It's like a tenor or baritone aria, a heroic and epic uh, solo aria in an opera, uh, like at the most important moment in the plot where he's just stating it as it is and you just feel the epicness of the whole opera. Um, so this is the aria. I play it like an aria, a lot of rubato because it's a, it's a singing melody this. And this is actually, this theme, it's actually a transformation from the first tragic Leandro theme. So if you remember in the beginning... This is the th theme. And now listen to the tenor theme. the same theme in major instead of minor transformed and this is a feature that Liszt does sometimes that he's quite good at and it's exactly the same in Liszt's big sonata in B minor and he tried out this thing in, in both of these pieces because uh, he wrote the ballad just after he's written the sonata in the same year so they're like sister pieces in a way both in B minor and both have these um, transformation of the themes. Okay. And now this theme is gonna come four times as well. One for each night that uh, Leander and Hero was together, even though the fourth night didn't happen. So you can see that's like the spirit of Leander or the memory of the times or the power of love that lives on after death or something. And of course, since it's list music, it's going to get more intense for each time. expanded and it's also over the whole register, uh, these amazing harmony shifts. It's very like a precursor to Wagner almost, Wagnerian chords. Like, how is it going with this 
uh, what's what's happening with does hero know about Leander yet or it's really epic story. <laughs> Third time, it's uh, more intense. Grandioso means grand and majestic, and we also have a return of the waves in the bass. of that. Well, let's take the waves, uh, but instead of just the bass, let's make the waves over the whole register of the piano uh, as a scale like this. for the melody, so uh, melody in the right hand, left hand, and the left hand takes over the melody when the right hand continues with the scale. Okay, so then we reach here. Final, final run now. And Liszt wrote two endings. Uh, there's two endings to this piece. And the first one, he just continued with this powerful, bombastic piano playing. But then he revised the ending. And the second revised ending is generally accepted to be the proper ending, and everyone plays it. And so in the second ending, instead of the bombastic piano writing, you get the return of the love theme uh, stated in a simple way. Uh, soft and slow again as a kind of reconciliation and it's musically and dramatically it's more powerful and more interesting and it's the exact same idea in the B minor sonata as well you have a, a slow ending there as well so after all this energy you have three fragments to to cool down and transform all the energy <laughs> where just heavens open up and it's just bliss amazing this uh, now with it's not the proper chord note in the bass it's uh, another note chords down here and some tension on the final chords and resolving the proper B major the melody is resolving 
as the last note of the piece. Now let's listen to the whole piece and I hope you can enjoy the tragic Greek drama of Hero and Leander that is Liszt's ballad number two in B minor. 